After successful visits to Riga in Latvia and Torbay in England, now we go to Dresden in Germany. That's the home of the Fraunhofer Institute for Organic Electronics, Electron Beam and Plasma Technology. We call it Fraunhofer FEP. They are busy developing all kinds of innovative solutions, technologies and processes for surface modification and organic electronics. Let's understand more about their core knowledge in electron beam and roll-to-roll -roll technology, as well as plasma activated large area and precision coating. I am very interested in their pile of manufacturing opportunities for the treatment, structuring and finishing of surfaces. And I'm sure we'll be able to see what's cooking with OLED micro displays, organic and inorganic sensors, optical filters and flexible OLED lighting. So join me in Dresden from the comfort of your own office, live in the Epic YouTube channel this Tuesday, March 16th at 4 p.m. CET. Bill coming! So ladies and gentlemen, I'm very, very excited about this. We are live. I'm connecting live from the Netherlands. I'm here in Nordvik, 20 kilometers south of Amsterdam airport. I cannot travel yet. And I'm connecting live. I'm traveling virtually to one of my most favorite cities in the whole Europe. I'm traveling to Dresden to visit Fraunhofer FEP. So let's arrive there. Am I welcome today here at Fraunhofer FEP, Uwe Vogel, head of the department for displays and sensors. Thank you very much for having me today. Hello, everybody. Uh, nice to have you here at this virtual tour at Fraunhofer FEP in Dresden, Germany. My name is Uwe Vogel, uh, and I'm representing Fraunhofer FEP here. Fraunhofer, you might know, is Europe's largest organization for applied R&D. And Fraunhofer FEP is doing that as well, in particular in the fields of, as the name Fraunhofer FEP uh, means, uh, organic electronic, electron beam, and plasma technology. And that also relates to uh, three of our core competencies. And there are, uh, let's say, also uh, in this organic electronics specifically also involves manufacturing technologies for organic electronics, but on the other hand, also IC, integrated circuitry uh, design. And specifically, these two uh, core competencies are also contributing to the business field of micro displays and sensors that we are presenting here today. And this will be our next uh, turn here in the showroom. Uh, and we are also presenting today another business unit that also relates to organic electronics that is about flexible organic electronics. And last but not least, also plasma activated large area uh, deposition for precision coatings, for precision uh, optic layers, for instance, and similar. This will be our third uh, uh, division or third division where we uh, present today. Uh, Dresden is operating, or well, FEP is operating at two sites. We are here at one side, very close to the airport, and the uh, flexible organic electronics as well. And the precision coating will be on another side uh, in the city center. So we will switch there or to there later on today. This is one okay, of the beautiful so, things of the company visits that we can actually be in two places on Dresden. We start next to the airport and then we go to the city center. Uwe, talk to us a bit more about Fraunhofer FEP because we've been interacting with many of your partners in the roll-to-roll -roll manufacturing. How many people work at Fraunhofer FEP? Okay, so at Fraunhofer FEP, we are roughly uh, 180 people uh, plus students uh, that we also have from uh, local or regional uh, universities here. And uh, of course, uh, we are collaborating closely also, let's say, with the regional environment, so with both industry as well as academic institutions, and not just in our re region, specifically also, uh, let's say, the, the industrial partners are actually scattered worldwide. So that relates to role to role, as you mentioned, that is another core competency that we operate at FEP. Uh, and last but not least, let's say our sixth core competency is related to so-called integrated packages. So more or less, let's say, complete tools, equipment uh, that are based on specific technology, for instance, based on electron beam guns, based on plasma sources that have been developed at front of FP. I can't wait anymore. I was told that you actually are going to show us seven demonstrators on the micro displays and sensor side. I really can't wait. Let's start. Let's show me. What, what are you going to show us now? 
Okay, so I mean, <laughs> welcome to the show, and that's why uh, we are starting here in front of our showroom. And uh, uh, some of those devices, I mean, that's nice about micro displays. You can always carry it with you. So I can have it in my hand, or maybe one day I can even have it in my eyes, or at, nowadays at least in front of my eyes. So you can imagine these are rather tiny devices uh, that can be also uh, driven and controlled by another tiny and miniaturized, miniaturized electronics, as well as small battery. And as you can imagine from this, uh, we call it our family of micro displays. Uh, this can, well, those can come in various sizes, of course. And we will have a, a closer look into what that means and what it's good for. So now we you helping me to open the showroom door. Thank you very much. Okay. So we'll have a look at the devices. Okay. And uh, well, I mean, that is actually, let's say, the basis. Uh, for uh, of our micro display technology. So it's actually about combining silicon CMOS integrated mm -hmm. circuitry together with uh, light emission and also light detection on a single chip. Uh, so actually we combine, let's say we heterogeneously combine different technologies. I mean, the well-known uh, silicon CMOS from single crystalline silicon uh, together, which is an inorganic semiconductor, of course, uh, and we combine it together with organic semiconductors. And organic semiconductors, for instance, in the sense of OLED, organic light emitting diodes, but also organic photodiodes. And we actually combine uh, those or both technology with each other. That means we perform the IC circuitry design, the so-called backplane design. So all the circuitry that is comprised in such a silicon chip. And I can really tell you, these are highly integrated and very complex uh, circuits, integrated circuits. So uh, let's say, for instance, uh, this large device has roughly 8 million pixels or 8 million. 8 million uh, pixels. Can you put it closer to the camera? We want to see without really checking any of the IP protected <laughs> of this, but we, we, 8 we have million pixels. lighting up later on again. So, I mean, it's even more impressive later on, I think. <laughs> uh, but I mean, just to give you an idea about the complexity of those devices. So let's say, let's assume roughly 8 million pixels. Uh, and each of these pixels might comprise at least three or maybe five or maybe 10 or even 20 transistors. So you can easily imagine that the number of transistors in such an entire chip is in the upper million, or let's say in the upper 100 million. So really very complex integrated uh, devices. So that means we perform the IC designs, integrated circuitry design, send the design data to a wafer manufacturer, and typically we receive eight inch wafers back from the silicon foundry. And then we perform the a wafer like this one, for instance. And then we perform uh, the post-processing of the organic semiconductors that finally make up the OLED or whatever light source on top of this chip, or maybe also the organic photodiodes. We perform this by post-processing in our own line. So that means in my division, we have one department that is dealing with the integrated circuitry, backplane design, and another department that is dealing with the OLED, or organic semiconductor post-processing on top of the silicon paper. And last but not least, we are operating a clean room, which is actually handling this uh, eight-inch wafer-based uh, post-processing. Uwe, okay. there's, uh, it is quite fascinating that you can do the integrated photonic devices in the in in, in Dresden. Tell us first, what uh, applications are we serving with these uh, integrated optics? Tell us, tell us a, a couple of cool applications that we can actually sure. study further. Sure, maybe maybe let's have a look uh, on those devices. I mean, here you can see them fully operating. For instance, this is your one-inch screen diagonal full color WUXGA resolution device. Uh, and here to the right, there's a smaller one, 0.6 inch roughly. And uh, um, this is 720p resolution. And the larger one is actually dedicated or specifically dedicated uh, for VR applications. So uh, this was uh, actually uh, developed in the frame of a EC funded project. And there also we had an, uh, an application partner uh, who is making or developing VR headsets. And uh, they used actually this device, this large device, uh, in two displays per eye, that means four per headset, to achieve very high pixel per degree uh, angular resolution VR headsets, much beyond state of the art. I mean, state of the art is roughly, let's say, 15 pixel per degree 
and that's about 25 pixels per degree. And the smaller one is more dedicated to augmented reality. And you can easy, or you can maybe imagine that from the device that Annette is showing here right now. So uh, this is a combination of the smaller display with such a uh, see-through optics. Uh, yes, I think you can imagine uh, how on the uh, mirror, on the semi-transparent mirror, the virtual image is uh, achieved. And uh, so that is a rather obvious augmented reality uh, application. Oh, wow. I, I was not expecting this. Oh, wow. Uh, you know, Uwe, I never travel alone. I travel always with my friends. I love doing that. And today I have a, a lot of friends with me in the room. And um, one of my friends uh, selling Piravadili from, from Turkey, from Tubitak Mam, has a mm -hmm. question for you. Selling, thank you very much for joining all the way from Turkey, visiting Dresden with me today. What's on your mind? Selling, please uh, unmute yourself and you can ask your question. Selling. I think we have some problems with the sound of, of selling. I don't think he could, he can, he can connect. So I will read his question. He is wondering about uh, perovskite OLEDs. Uh, in general, what OLED technologies are being developed at uh, at Fraunhofer FEP, and what future technologies do you foresee for OLED? Okay, so I mean, uh, we are mainly on uh, OLED uh, that uh, are evaporated. Uh, and uh, that means these are small molecule OLEDs. So, um, I mean, there is some R&D ongoing with respect to perovskite OLEDs, and maybe also, let's say, beyond OLED, uh, there might be future technologies like micro-LED or so, uh, that are also kind of, uh, let's say, R&D hype uh, to, uh, nowadays. Uh, but, I mean, we are really focusing on the, integ on the integration of, um, of light sources, so mostly OLEDs so far, or those small molecule OLEDs so far onto top of silicon. And so this, this, let's say this integration uh, of uh, integrating organic semiconductors on top of silicon, uh, on of, uh, CMOS silicon. I mean, this is uh, something special. And I mean, that, let's say that kind of integration technology would also have to be adapted for, uh, let's say for different uh, deposition or material deposition schemes uh, that might be related to perovskite OLED or that might be related to micro LED. But on the other hand, let's say the backplane circuitry is rather similar, and whereas the wafer level process integration would be, let's say, somehow specific. But in general, I mean, our backplanes could also be used uh, with perovskite uh, LED uh, or with micro LED, as I mentioned. One thing that is amazing for Fraunhofer FEP, they have been interacting with many, many European consortium in bringing volume manufacturing of sensor, of organic electronics, or roll-to-roll -roll, uh, OLED displays, on OLED lighting, always interacting with many partners. They're open for many collaborations. Uwe, what's on your hands? Yeah, so I mean, um, okay. I mean, uh, you had asked for, for applications. Uh, and this application that I have in my hand here, and that you might be able to see now, is related to assisted reality. So that's slightly different uh, to augmented reality in a sense. Assisted a sense. reality. Assisted reality. And let's say the major, the major differences, you can, you can imagine uh, some, let's say, navigation symbols here on the, on the smartphone screen. And I assume you have seen similar, uh, let's say, the similar symbols and similar information on top of the virtual screen uh, on that head as well. And uh, we call this assisted reality uh, in contrast to augmented reality, since augmented reality mainly relates uh, to, let's say, virtually overlaid information uh, in front of your eye. That is, let's say, in a spatial context to the real world, to the real view. With assisted reality, something I carry like this one, I get, I let's it. say, context-sensitive information uh, on my eye, uh, which relates, for instance, to such navigation information that relates, let's say, to, uh, to, to outside temperatures, that relates to, to speed. If I'm having such sort of, uh, let's say, device in a, in a motorcycle helmet, for instance, uh, or, or let's say in a, in a bicycle helmet or also in such a cap or in a hat or whatever. So let's say for assisted reality, there's not that spatial overlay of virtual information on the real world, but 
it's uh, just let's say semantic and context sensitive, but uh, let's say there's a major advantage. So it's not necessary to really recognize, to visually recognize the entire scene. And therefore we can really make devices that are very lightweight, that are very tiny, um, and that also achieve a very long battery life. You can imagine that's a real variable. Yeah. And the variable's battery life is much more important uh, than, for instance, uh, resolution. And that's what we can enable uh, by such sort of device. And this has been combined as a very specific backplane circuitry architecture that achieves real ultra low power consumption. So regular okay. micro display. The idea is that they okay. get okay. You get the information from from a mobile phone they in your pocket, or does it have the the sensors already incorporated in the? I mean, I mean, I mean, that depends. Uh, I mean, uh, this uh, smartphone is uh, connected via Bluetooth or via Bluetooth low energy to this, mm -hmm. uh, let's say, near to a terminal device, Fantastic. and the terminal device is let's say rather some. So most of the, let's say, most of the processing is actually performed here at the smartphone. Uh, but since it's such a, let's say, some device, uh, you can really achieve battery life of, let's say, 40 hours or so uh, with such a device in contrast to, let's say, the battery life of a smartphone or of a smartwatch or whatever uh, other variables you might know. And so that is, let's say, the major advantage of that. So you can have many sensors in the smartphone, but to some extent, you might also be able to embed sensors in the near to eye module as well. Is the, uh, the device has no camera. As you said, you are optimizing for five, for, for battery lifetime. Is there a, a roadmap to actually incorporate a camera and have uh, face recognition or uh, having further? Is there something that you are thinking about on that? He's camera smiling. You can see nice... the smile underneath the mask, but I know he's smiling. <laughs> camera, camera is a very nice, uh, let's say, hint in that sense. Uh, that, uh, one of the unique devices uh, that we have developed here at front of FEP are so-called bi bidirectional OLED micro displays. That means that our micro displays, as you can imagine here, so they are just displaying full color, high resolution images. But on the other hand, uh, each of the display pixel comprises an image sensor pixel as well. So we can actually uh, use it as both a display as an image sensor. And you might probably be able uh, to recognize it here from my, uh, let's say, from my experiment. So I'm having an external light source and I'm putting some, some devices, uh, let's say, in like the staple here uh, on top of the, on top of the bi bidirectional OLED micro display. And here on the screen, on the laptop screen, you can probably easily wow. recognize the image sensor function. So that's why indeed, let's say also the camera is our, let's say our topic. And uh, indeed, there's also a chance to integrate both of these features. So that means a display to, uh, to provide a, a virtual image and to combine that with the embedded uh, image sensor, for instance, in such sort of uh, AR uh, smart classes. Uh, and there, uh, there is a chance to, to image the, the image sensor onto the eye of the human. And now the eye can be tracked and this can be used for let's say, hands-free and voice-free interaction of the user with the, with the virtual screen. All right. And, you know, and, the same, and the same technology is actually being used in fingerprint sensors. So, I mean, here you can imagine uh, that it's the same bi uh, bidirectional OLED micro display. And now the blue light is just to illuminate my skin surface, my finger skin surface, like this one. And... Uh, and uh, now you should be able to recognize, I, I put, uh, let's say the, the OLED is illuminating my skin surface and the embedded image sensor is actually uh, detecting my fingerprint. So that is the same device, completely different application. And you can imagine that goes into sensing and that goes into ultra flat uh, fingerprint sensing, for instance, optical fingerprint sensing. And last but not least, we are also using the same OLED and silicon technology, so OLED light source, together with embedded photo detectors on top of a silicon chip for sensing applications. We call that our universal optical sensor platform. And here you can imagine, uh, here you can imagine uh, we have uh, an orange and a blue light source and around that uh, there are uh, some several photo detectors. And here is a, a sensing spot. It's, a, it's actually a dye. Uh, and this dye is being sensitive to external environmental parameters like O2 saturation 
more like pH uh, in, in gases or in liquids pH. And uh, now you can actually use the same, we make use of the same technology. It's not a display anymore, but these are the, the same ingredients. It's called that way. Uh, to, for instance, detect the oxygen content in such a setup. So, um, Annette, if you could uh, go here. So here we see, for instance, the oxygen level. And now we are reducing uh, the oxygen concentration uh, in this uh, setup. And you can clearly see how the oxygen um, the concentration is going down. And that is kind of, let's say, a sensing um, application of the same technology that has been used for the bi-directional micro display before. Is there, is there a, any way to actually go into further wavelengths, to go into longer wavelengths to measure other, other chemical compositions? Because on this, we do have great companies that would like to cooperate with you. Sure. sure. I mean, that is, uh, let's say, uh, for this place, obviously, we are mostly in the visible. So that means between 400 to 700 nanometers for both the display as well as the image sensor or the photo detectors. But definitely, specifically for sensing application, uh, it's also of interest to excite, uh, for instance, the fluorescent uh, material in the UV, um, or also, let's say, to detect, to detect, for instance, some response, also some phosphorescent or fluorescent response, also in the near infrared. So definitely for both uh, the excitation as well as the detection, uh, also outside the visible, specifically in the near infrared, uh, that is definitely of interesting, uh, of interest. And uh, let's say also for, let's say, some uh, kind of thermal imaging uh, applications and so on, also, let's say, uh, wavelengths for detection and possibly also for emission in the one to two or to three micrometer range might be interesting as well. We are, we are going to have uh, later perhaps a, a, a Q&A with the rest of the, of the oh. people that came with me to visit. I, I have people from, from Fiat, I have people from Audi in the room. Uh, is there any possibilities, any, any ideas that you have for outreaching the automotive sector? Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, automotive, there are, let's say, several applications. One is indeed uh, the use of uh, near-eye displays. Uh, that if you remind, for instance, uh, the, the embedded eye tracking feature uh, that could even enable uh, to detect that there is a consciousness uh, of, the, of the driver. Uh, some other applications might also be related uh, to head-up displays, for instance, but also, again, to sensing applications. Uh, like, for instance, uh, as I mentioned, let's say even CO2 uh, um, saturation or CO2 concentration in the, uh, in the car, uh, also things. So there might be different applications in automotive as well, of course. We will discuss about this later. We also will discuss how to help you because you do wafer level manufacturing. We want to see how we can test those wafers. We also have seen a huge interest in the new space to actually bring technologies to space and to qualify technologies to space. I would like to address that as well. And we also would like to see what kind of cooperations can we do with the Epic membership. Atube has been really, really great. I was amazed. I was not expecting the augmented reality demonstrator. You surprised me there. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay. So maybe maybe that's time to hand over to, to my colleagues. You know, no, wait, wait, are... Uwe. So I told you I never travel alone. I have Alexander from Nolden Cars and Concepts uh, from the automotive sector. Alexander, thank you very much for joining the meeting today. Thank you for, the virt for coming virtually to Dresden. What's on your mind? Oh, yes, uh, thank you, Jose. Um, just trying to activate my camera, but I will quickly um, uh, have a question here. Is this technology maybe capable to... Um, yeah, fulfill the dream of headlamps or at least signaling devices that we can pop onto the body and white of a vehicle, which is super slim, um, just like an OLED, but maybe not integrated in something like a housing. Maybe then possible to achieve high luminous intensities to illuminate the road or fulfill signaling device functions. Thank you. Okay. So, uh, well, I mean, uh, obviously, well, let's say as far as I understand your question, luminance is obviously the key. Uh, and uh, let's say most of our applications, I mean, uh, you can imagine virtual reality doesn't really require uh, high luminance. For augmented reality, it's already different uh, since most of the optics that are being, of the see-through optics that are being used in augmented reality, uh, now they uh, really come with, with lots of optical losses. 
And therefore, let's say, uh, rather high luminance is already required uh, to be, let's say, transferred through the waveguides or whatever optically is uh, being used. And in that sort of, let's say, projection applications, uh, as you have it in mind, uh, even, let's say, a much higher uh, luminance will be required, obviously. Uh, but micro displays, let's say, very high luminance micro displays are already a topic or a hot topic in head-up displays for either automotive or avionics. And, uh, but I mean, you, you always face this, uh, let's say, face this issue or this challenge uh, that you would have to generate a very high luminance uh, at a certain, uh, let's say, current or power efficiency at a rather tiny chip. So, and uh, let's say this power has to be dissipated there and has to be, uh, let's say, distributed uh, appropriately, or let's say the heat has to be distributed appropriately. Mm. Uh, but these are things uh, where, let's say, also, let's say, alternative light sources, I mean, beside OLED, uh, might also help in resolve uh, these issues. So far, or for this, I already mentioned micro LED uh, on silicon. And these are, let's say, uh, yeah, well, future directions uh, that uh, will be of interest for such sorts of applications. Mm, okay. Thank you for going deeper in here. Thanks. Thank you so much, Alexander, for coming with me to Dresden. Let's go for a beer later in Dresden. They have great, great breweries. But I want to go to Uwe now. Thank you so much for this demonstrator. But you are also the, the chairman of this visit. Where are, we, where are you taking us now? Okay. So, uh, well, our next stage will be at the um, Division of Flexible Organic Electronics. My colleague Christian Meyer is uh, being available there uh, in a characterization lab. Uh, to show you some of uh, their specific devices. And afterwards, uh, we will move on uh, to the plasma technology department, which is on the other side, uh, in the city center. Uh, and this will be mainly about precision coatings, also for photonic and optical applications. So this is to hand over to Christian now. We go for now from micro displays and sensors to the OLED side, to the to the organic electronics, the flexible organic electronics activities of Fraunhofer FEP, which is worldwide known, and I have interacted with many of your colleagues, introduced to many companies. Let's hear what you have to show us, and also, most important, how can we help you, Christian, and your activity, even greater than already is. What's okay. that? Is that a car? Hello, Jose. It's a pleasure for me to see you, to see you, to hear you. Yes, and your audience, uh, please uh, let me introduce a little bit today in uh, to our activities, what we are doing here within my division, Flexible Organic Electronics uh, in Fraunhofer FEP. What is most related to the um, EPIC um, activities is of course uh, what we are doing on photonics application and here the most prominent uh, application, of course, most prominent uh, technology is OLED. And please let me uh, show some examples of our latest research work. And by that, I want to explain it uh, much more in detail. Yes, today we have OLED technology in general, lighting, uh, high quality white light emission panels available. We have OLED in the uh, back uh, lights of the cars. And uh, we claim that we can do much more with OLED because we have really the ULIC selling point. Of course, we have a strong competing technology, which is the inorganic LED, but we I think we can do much, much more by OLED technology. And by that, please come with me. Um, I want to show uh, to you to all uh, our Monash design kit uh, we have developed. Um, and the aim of this uh, design kit is to show really the unique selling points. And, and to also get, get the wow factor from the whole universe, because those uh, are very beautiful butterflies. <laughs> yes, uh, butterfly is uh, nice because it shows that uh, the OLED technology enables flexible devices. It enables transparent devices. We are able to make area color. And as you see here, we can also make freeform uh, devices. For me, this, yes. is, this is the magic here. So you, what you are doing is an extremely, I don't like the sentence low cost, but an extremely affordable way of making any shape, any shape, any, light, low cost, flexible, 
display, well, flexible lighting. And I, I do understand that the automotive sector is very interested. I understand the consumer. I, I already saw that there was a roadmap to actually make a, a make labels for drinks to, to have displays on them. And so this is really the future. And together with the Lightios uh, pilot line, you have been one of the companies to watch on this. Yes, uh, thank you, Jose. Um, yes, here we are on the road and, and we have the roadmap and we have this exciting opportunities. And especially we have to work uh, to a, a low also a lower cost production because this is uh, today's challenge uh, to bring it to enable much higher market penetration to reduce the production costs. By that, uh, you should know um, here in Fraunhofer FEP, uh, we have two OLED pilot lines. One is related uh, to sheet to sheet processing. We have here in our location, here we are in the characterization lab, but on this uh, location, we have our sheet to sheet process line where we are working on 200 by 200 millimeter substrate size. And on the, at the other location in Dresden, we have our roll to roll line and we claim that we can have much higher throughput uh, and by that much lower costs going uh, to the roll to roll production. And therefore we are working on it. But today I want to focus on uh, what we have done here, especially for the demonstrators in sheet to sheet and let's come um, back or go, let's go for the automotive um, application. You know, we have on the road uh, auto, uh, OLED backlights. At this time, rigid uh, panels, uh, nice patterning available and so on. But we claim uh, that we can do uh, something more. And by uh, that, my colleagues have invented this yes, Bobby car uh, style. <laughs> and here we have um, used all the demonstrators we have and we have addressed whatever we can imagine uh, to use the OLED uh, technology. Yes, of course you see the backlight, but you see it here also in, um, in, in flexible way. You see here the belts uh, in flexible. And uh, here at the front, we have our color tunable um, Devices you see it changes the color uh, white, blue, orange. It's not a display; it's the same uh, device changing uh, the color. And in the, yes. in the Christian, in the last years since we met uh, in Brussels, uh, we have been discussing about bringing these demonstrators to the automotive industry. And I know you have been very active on this with some of the pilot lines. What has been the reaction, and what is the the result for the automotive validation of this technology? Um, qualification. Yes. Automotive uh, qualification. We, we see a high interest uh, on the technology uh, at the OEMs, uh, especially because uh, here you can really play with the light. You can uh, make unique design uh, approaches. And um, it is a proven technology. We have it on the road, especially for the rigid uh, OLEDs. Um, and by that, uh, using flexible substrates, uh, you can do uh, the same. Here in this example, we have used barrier-coated PET films, but it is also possible, and we are working also on it to use flexible ultrasound glass. It is also <laughs> flexible, and you have the um, unique properties uh, of uh, glass. You have the perfect barriers. This is all it is possible. And therefore, yes, let's, let's go to the next step together. OK. Jose, I want to show you the next generation, uh, which is um, here. Um, here I was going to say that if the car start moving, I would cry. So it's good that we go to the next demonstrator. Good. <laughs> yes, we have, here we have a next demonstrator, which is a pattern uh, stripe. You see the individual pattern uh, segments, uh, which can be driven individually. Uh, and uh, this is an OLED. Again, of course, you can do similar things with uh, inorganic LEDs, but then you need a huge um, effort um, to have it as a homogeneous human output uh, and to avoid any pearl chain effect. But here we have really the, yes, let's say 0.3 millimeter a thick device with the individual, individual devices, which can be driven individually without any pearl chain effect. And 
Let's go for the next demonstrator. And I have here my uh, colleague, Jan Hesse. Uh, Hello, Jan. Jan. How are you doing? Oh, my God. Jan is all ready for action there. Yes. What do you have he under the mic? To show you something more, what we are doing with uh, patterning and also with customized uh, patterning. Uh, always you have to know this is not a display, this is not a pixel approach. We have lighting devices, but uh, we have introduced this um, unique uh, laser uh, based patterning process where we are able uh, to, um, to pattern um, an additional isolating layer. We have in between the transparent uh, electrode and the organic material itself. And by that, we have a lot of freedom to design to make customized uh, devices as you see here. Or what I like, uh, especially as the uh, Zebra, we have here. Um, and also all the OLED uh, production process remains unchanged. So you don't need any change in the process because you have the freedom uh, with a, a design, you have the digital uh, design by the laser approach, you are able to make such individualized uh, patterns. In Let's OLED. highlight this. These are not displays, these are lighting structures. Christian, uh, for, for the applications that you are targeting, you don't really require high intensity. Is there any limitation on the amount of light you get from your lighting structures? And is that something that could be uh, increased through some collaborations? I love introducing people. Okay, yes. Of, uh, we want to have as much light as possible. Um, coming also from the historical way, starting with the first uh, approaches in display technology, we have focused on 1,000 candela per square meter. Uh, for general lighting, we need uh, three to 5,000 candela per square meter. This is possible. And for the automotive um, applications, we need uh, much more. Uh, for instance, um, uh, for some turn indicators, it is required to have 12,000 candela per square meters. We have it uh, shown with a special uh, layer approach in the pi scale approach that you know uh, well. I think this is uh, reasonable uh, to reach such a uh, high lumen output. Uh, and of, I think this is a reasonable um, value. Of course, it is uh, very important to make things as easy as uh, possible. And by that, of course, outcoupling structures and uh, so on. Are, um, of high interest, but always you have to balance uh, the effort to have the costs down, but have to um, as much performance as possible. We, we are now, Christian, in the world of precision agriculture. We love it. We, we get excited with the, with the, with the light recipes. Uh, is the agriculture market one that you are targeting? And you can answer while you take me to your next colleague. Um, agriculture is a is a market uh, not yet. We uh, we see some um, reservations from this side because our uh, colleagues from the inorganic LEDs uh, can put uh, so so much uh, lumen output, which is not so easy today with uh, the OLED technology. But of course. Uh, we, we are working on it, and especially here, we have also an advantage uh, with the green emission, which is not so easy to reach with the inorganic uh, LED. But uh, agriculture is a, a good uh, idea, because I want to show you a next uh, example, which is at this time a little bit outside the uh, photonic application. But um, we are working, you should know, also on biodegradable electronics. Wow. And here I have such a test substrate there you see a transistor a structure, oh a biodegradable transistor structure, biodegradable metal uh, structure on biodegradable substrates. So, and here uh, we claim we will have some more activities uh, in the future because, uh, you know, uh, we have to uh, avoid the vast, um, we see a lot of, uh, was by all the electronic devices uh, around us. And we will be able to uh, allow also new applications using uh, biodegradable devices. And here, I think, especially for agriculture, to bring uh, any sensors um, to the earth 
uh, and without any need to remove it afterwards. Uh, you have it uh, for one summer during the period you need it. You are able uh, to receive any data using the drone uh, flying above the sensors, and then you just forgot it. So I think this is a very um, attractive uh, application for the technology, which is not so different as we are producing our bullet uh, devices. I get too excited. I, I have no words. You have biodegradable electronics. Is there a roadmap to have biodegradable photonic integrated circuits? I would love if you say yes. <laughs> let's work on it. Okay. Yes, let's, let's work on it. I'm going to call right now all the European industry. If you want to have a roadmap together with Fraunhofer FEP to make biodegradable photonic integrated circuits, you will make me the happiest, the happiest child in the whole Europe. Thank you so much, Christian. That was that was impressive. Is there anything else you want to show us, or where are you taking us next? Uh, I think uh, because uh, we have to be in an online uh, format uh, today, I want to show you one picture of our uh, nice city uh, of Dresden, and therefore we have again a specific OLED, as you see it here in our integrating uh, sphere. Uh, this is a panoramic uh, view, also designed by my colleague. Uh, Jan Hesse, and hopefully next time you will see it in reality. Dresden is such a beautiful city for everybody who's watching this and I have many people watching you know you have to go and visit and you will see how you know the whole city is surrounded by a wall and what's inside the wall and the way that people are like so friendly I can't wait to go there again I can't wait to all get vaccinated and start traveling like crazy again. Christian, one question before we continue. Uh, tell us one challenge, one idea for cooperation, one, one thing that EPIC members could help you with uh, reaching your preferred future. Um, I think um, it is very essential to uh, have a higher market penetration uh, and it will allow also to bring the costs uh, down. And by that, uh, we are we have a very high interest uh, to cooperate with you and to, uh, um, to get in interaction with all the EPIC members, uh, to be creative, to think uh, about new fields of application where we can use uh, the technology. I think it was possible to show uh, we can uh, customize lighting devices of, for automotive, but we are doing uh, something similar also uh, for medical uh, devices, OLED cluster, uh, for instance. You know, you know, we are very active here also in some European uh, funded projects uh, like Aquas uh, for zero Aquas for uh, researchers. So here we can interact uh, with you. We have just started together with you, uh, Jose, also the Photon Hub Europe uh, project where we can um, yes, establish a very strong uh, European photonic community using also the competences uh, of the technology. Any shape, any color, integrating it with sensors and even doing biodegradable electronics. And as Christian very well said, we have tools for any company in Europe to access this technology. So this technology is open for you. Christian, thank you so much. My expectations were here, you were over here. Thank you very, very, very much. And I want to go now because I love, I love coatings. Anybody who knows me knows how much I love coatings. We are gonna go to one of the activities in Europe strongest in coatings for large areas. We're going to go to Hagen Barts. Thank you very much, Hagen, for having us. We go now to the center of Dresden, to the geographical center of Dresden, where Hagen is going to tell us about the activities in precision coatings. Hagen, thank you so much for having us in Dresden. I have you muted, and I have a Mac to celebrate that phenomenon. You are muted. Yes. Can you hear me now? Yes, loud and clear. Okay, that's great. So I'm here in a laboratory room and it's quite loud, so I can hope that you can hear me well. My name is Hagen Bartsch. I'm from the business unit precision coating and division plasma technology. What we do mainly here is coating by plasma technologies and Macatron sputtering is the most prominent. Technology. Can you, uh, Hagen, can you put your microphone a bit closer to your your mouth, the microphone, yes, yes. just move it closer. Is it better now? 
Uh, yes, even if you put it even closer, like almost touching your lips, it would be even greater. Yes, okay. fantastic. I am not a rock singer. And I have oh, but I am. Don't worry. We can we can do, I, we can do something together. <laughs> Tell us. Okay. So uh, our business unit is called precision coating because many coatings require a very high precision, both on film thickness, on thickness uniformity, but also on film properties. And especially, we mostly have to achieve films that reach a combination of different film properties that are very difficult to obtain. For example, in optical films, on one hand, we want to have low stress, but mm -hmm. also very high climatic stability. No stress what? and very high climatic stability. I have to ask you, what's that machine behind you? I really have to ask. I, I'm so curious. What is that? So this is one of our cluster type sputtering equipments. It's a sputtering equipment. Hagen, you need to put the microphone all the time very close to your mouth. We are having some problem with the sound. Yeah. Okay. Maybe it's a mistake here in the technique. Okay. Yeah. So I think if you get close to the cameraman, it sounds better. Yeah. So this cluster equipment has six deposition stations for magnetron sputtering. We do typical films in the fields of optical or electronic applications. We presently in this equipment, we have a highly innovative project. We want to do sputter epitaxy of aluminum nitride and gallium nitride films for high power electronic applications. So such films are conventionally deposited by MOCVD technology at extremely high temperatures, but we want to use the plasma activation in a magnetron sputtering process to reduce the temperature, but still get single crystalline film and epitaxial growth on silicon or sapphire substrates. And this shall help to improve properties and reduce costs in deposition of such proteins. We high, high power electronics, uh, high power amplifiers, we are aware of the huge market that it is. In the last years, we saw also huge growth on IBS or huge growth on different sputtering technologies for optics for high fluence applications. So high speed, ultra fast lasers with high power. Is there any activities on this? And how do you see this particular application of sputtering? We do have activities in the field of getting optical thin films for optical interference coatings with extremely low absorption and scattering losses. And sputter technology offers quite some degrees of freedom to achieve some film properties. Uh, for example, depositing mixtures of different films and so achieving, for example, extremely low scattering losses that are needed for example, reflectors for laser applications. I would also like to show you one of our first demonstrators with regard to this technology. So we have here a so-called Rugate filter. Uh, this is uh, not a conventional high-low reflective index filter, but it's a filter that has a film with a sine wave variation of the refractive index. And with this variation, it's possible that one single leg wavelength is reflected, but all the other light goes through the, through such wavelength. So one example of application for such filters is a beam splitter in concentrated solar power application, where we split the part of the light that is used for solar thermal energy generation and the light that is used for photovoltaic energy generation and yeah, the amazing the, thing that you are doing with your with your coatings is that you target you target large areas uh, is uh, what are the, the the main application fields uh, we, we talk in the past together we talk about space we have talked about automotive what are the main application fields for this large area coatings in, especially in the optics domain let's stay in the optics i'm a photonics guy you know that yeah yeah to so be uh, in principle have two uh, lines here also in this room. So large area on this cluster equipment you see here means eight inch substrate size. 
standard substance size for most microelectronics, for many microelectronics applications, but also for many hospital applications. In this setup, we are able to achieve a very good thickness uniformity by our specially developed double ring microtron. Mm -hmm. This is the combination of two concentric microtrons in yeah. one microtron source. And by the superposition of the thickness distributions of those two the charges, we get a very uniform film across the eight inch diameter uh, up to plus minus 0.5%. So, but you know, you know, Hagen, I never travel alone. I always bring friends with me. And today I brought uh, an Epic member, PLX. And the reason why I want you to, to meet my friend Martin is that PLX is one of the key companies that we have in Epic in retro reflectors for, for mainly space applications, but other applications as well. Martin, thank you so much for coming with me and joining Dresden to, uh, together. Martin, that's right. That PLX is very active in retro reflectors, correct? Yes, correct. Uh, is, there, is there any particular room for cooperation with companies who are active in coatings? Well, we do use a wide variety of coatings, both uh, standard and various dielectric ones. It depends on the customer's application. Uh, you know, we, we do uh, or have made retroflectors incorporating beam splitters also. I don't, I don't... Hagen, when it comes to the, to the activities in, in large area coatings that uh, you are active with, is there any, role, any, any activities in validation for harsh environments, especially for space? We have not yet done evaluation for space environments. We do have some experience in, let's say, standard harsh environments, uh, like different sorts of very hard climate, yes, but not for example, gamma ray radiation also. P PLX is our key company in EPIC, bringing retro reflectors to different application fields. I think the two of you should have a discussion offline. Martin, thank you so much. He was saying, no, no, don't bring it online. Martin, thank you very much for coming with me to dress them virtually. I have more okay. friends that will come to you uh, later, but Hagen, what else do you want to show us? Yeah, another field of application besides the optical applications are tools for sensor and electronic applications. So one so we see the energy harvesting. Are piezoelectric thin forms that we can deposit. And we have this nice toy here. We have a thin film metal substrate, a thin metal substrate deposited with an aluminum nitride piezoelectric film and an electrode on top of it. And if I strike this substrate, I generate electrical energy, and you see the voltage is increasing higher and higher the more often I, I oh, strike wow. the substrate. So such films can be used for micro energy harvesting, for example, to operate sensors autonomously, for example, on moving parts or in parts there is no access and where the system itself should supply with energy. I, I also never never travel alone. I come with friends. And today I came with uh, Alexander Losing from Alos Semiconductor. Alexander, thank you very much for coming with me to Dresden. You are a big epic fan. It is always great to have you with me here. Uh, what uh, Do you have something in mind? Some question that you could ask my friend Hagen? Uh, yes, uh, Jose. Um, hello, everybody. Um, great to be here again. Um, uh, Mr. Bach, a question from my side. You said you're doing a GAN by um, CVD, and um, I heard about your, your projects before, so I'm very curious. Um, are you um, looking also at micro LED application for the GAN deposition? Not, not yet, because presently we are still in the very basic development of the processes. So we are not doing MOC, but we are mm -hmm. doing Macatron sputtering, and we are in the beginning of this development. So presently, we achieved the first epitaxial growth of sputtered aluminum nitride films on silicon wafers. The next step would be the epitaxial growth of gallium nitride, then to deposit buffer layers. So before we uh, think of going to the micro LED, we are quite 
take some time, but on the middle and long term, we have it in mind such application. Great. Alexander so loved that answer because I'm sure that you're going to have an offline discussion on how to bring this to the Allo Semiconductor, one of our key companies in this sector. Thank you so much, Alexander, for being with us. We're going to have a Q&A later, but uh, what else, Hagen? What else is on your mind or on your tables? Yeah, I want to show you that certain startups are being I, I am not sure now that we can hear you. you. I think you are too far from the camera man or woman, Sorry, of course. Camera, uh, but yeah, I, we do not stop at the 8-inch substrate size, but we can also go larger substrates, very uniform, and then we have the slide table, we have an example of a larger substrate that is coated mm -hmm. uniformly by sputtering. And I would also like to show you the corresponding equipment to this. Well, you know, this kind of equipment is fantastic to see it in action, but I know that that could be very hard today. Also to larger substrates, so what you can see here is our equipment pretense line. By big, it's attached to clean room, and the substrate is moving through this chamber, mm -hmm. and by movement of the substrate through this equipment using uh, special precision substrate, Movement. We can deposit optical multi layer systems at very high precisions onto large substrates. So, one example we presently are using this is a three day display, holographic three day displays, where we deposit special layer systems that have uh, the light out coupling at certain laser wavelengths. To the, the voice is cutting a little, but one question out of my curiosity, knife curiosity, what is the largest substrate that you can coat? The largest substrate with the extremely good uniformity of up to 0.1% thickness uniformity is 400 times 600 millimeter. 200 times 600 millimeters. So I am calling... times 600. So I'm calling for the telescope manufacturers in, in Epic. If you want to find finally the partner that you need for the new space applications, it is in Dresden and it's called Fraunhofer FPP. Hagen, danke. Thank you very much for this. It was truly fantastic. We're going to have a little bit of a Q&A now. I'm going to go back to, I'm going to go back to uh, Uwe's office. Uh, Uwe, thank, well, this was spectacular. Really, really spectacular. I loved every minute of it. Thank you very much for this. Uwe, you, I think you know what's coming because you already know me for a while. The epic question. I have 700, almost 700 companies behind me. What can they do for you? And what can you do for them? Sure. I think uh, the, what we could do for others, uh, of course, mainly for EPIC members, but also for, uh, for others, is to provide, let's say, unique photonic components. But on the other hand, also uh, photonic components and layers manufacturing technologies. So I think these are major, uh, let's say, this is our potential major contribution. So in terms of photonic components, like, for instance, a unique bidirectional OLED micro displays, like the flexible organic uh, electronic and OLED signage uh, devices uh, that Christian has shown, or also, let's say, specifically, let's say, the optical uh, layer uh, based components. Uh, that uh, Hagen has presented, presented. But on the other hand, what uh, EPIC uh, could do for us is, uh, let's say, definitely to connect us uh, to European players, uh, also, let's say, in terms of basic research, since, I mean, we as Fraunhofer are performing applied R&D, so that means uh, we are, uh, let's say, we are all, we are also uh, depending on, uh, let's say, close links uh, to basic research that is typically performed at uh, universities or other academic institutions. And of course, we have that, uh, let's say, locally and regionally, regionally uh, already. Uh, but let's say sometimes also elsewhere in Europe uh, are, let's say, nice uh, entities uh, performing uh, well world-leading photonics uh, research, basic research. Then, of course, we are also interested in, let's say, technology providers or industrial technology providers uh, in micro technologies and photonics, like, for instance, wafer suppliers, silicon photonics, uh, those things. 
And last but not least, let's say for the, how to say, uh, we are looking also for partners who potentially integrate our devices, our uh, technologies, our equipment, our tools, our, let's say, plasma sources and whatever, what we have developed into systems. So who really, let's say, uh, make it uh, to produce new products. And last but not least, also, we are interested, let's say, in application partners who actually, uh, let's say, prove, uh, let's say, practical capabilities and applications, even applications we might never think of ourselves uh, in, 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 in their, let's say, specific markets. And last but not least, we are also interested in setting up uh, EC, or let's say, uh, European Consortia uh, for EC-funded projects. Uh, that is also definitely of our interest. So these are typically collaborative projects, also comprising basic research uh, and uh, industrial partners and also uh, further R&D partners may be. And last but not least, the funding for those uh, collaborative European projects is important. And that might be another playground uh, where uh, EPIC should be uh, active uh, to really, let's say, enable and allocate uh, sources of European funding for such kind of projects. There's never going to be a lack of funding when there are good ideas. Never. We put together pilot lines for manufacturing roll to roll OLED lighting in Europe, and it was a success. So if we could do this and call it light use, and now it's being alive and it's going to be alive for a year, we can do anything. So I'm not worried about finding, I was finding the funding. The funding is there to find good ideas in Europe. We are very lucky to have the European Commission behind. But what we need to do is to get those, those great ideas. For me, it is one thing that when we, when we talk uh, about the volume production, and this is, I would like to bring your colleagues, also Christian and Hagen, to the table. When we talk about technologies for volume production, which is what you are doing at Fraunhofer FEP, there's always the, the understanding that Europe is not as strong in that. I'm sure, Uwe, that you come across people like that because I do it every day. What do you answer to them when they tell you, you're look, talking about volume production of low cost of to electronic devices, and that's not for Europe, that's for China. What do you say to these people? Well, I mean, uh, let's say, uh... Indeed, let's say very low cost is probably, let's say, not our major, uh, our major field. Uh, and uh, but I mean, what we can really, let's say, we as Fraunhofer in general, but uh, Fraunhofer FEP in particular uh, can contribute to, uh, are, uh, let's say, really, let's say, unique devices, unique manufacturing technologies, even let's say, unique equipment uh, that can be used for volume manufacturing or that will be used or is already being used for volume manufacturing. Um, and um, let's say, and and really, let's say, uh, let's say all the processes uh, that we are uh, performing our R&D on are really industry compatible. So, I mean, these are typically, I mean, you have seen that, uh, let's say, also uh, with, with Hagen's devices, for instance. I mean, these are tools uh, that are used by industrial volume manufacturers in Europe, in the US, or elsewhere as well. And uh, let's say, therefore, let's say we are really, let's say, close to, to industry compatible uh, and capable uh, manufacturing technologies. And I think this is our unique point, uh, let's say, and, and that's maybe also a reason uh, that uh, within Fraunhofer, we quite have, a, let's say, a pretty significant uh, part of industrial revenues or direct uh, private contracts uh, with industrial partners. Uh, you, you might have heard let's say about the three uh, funding piles of Fraunhofer. So we have one uh, funding pile is basic funding, then uh, the second funding pile is about uh, publicly funded collaborative projects on national and state or even on EC level, of course. And last but not least, let's say the private funding from industrial mm -hmm. contracts. And the, the ratio of our industrial funding is rather high. And that's why we are so close uh, to our European, but also let's say worldwide industry partners. I also, I never travel alone. I come with friends. Uh, today I came with my friend from Opto Sigma. Axel, thank you very much for joining today. You are one of these people who travels all around Europe talking to people about optical filters. Uh, this is your life. And I love uh, talking to you about this. When you saw uh, what uh, Hagen has showed us about the different filter solution, different coating solutions, uh, what is do you, do you foresee any opportunities for cooperation, any ideas or anything that we could do together? I love introducing people. Yeah, th thank you so much. So a kind introduction. So I, to be honest, it's very, for me, it was very impressive. 
Um, because um, I mean, for all the displays, for all the new technology of visualization automotive. So um, to be honest, I don't see that much um, cooperation view, but it's every time very interesting where, is the, where are the leaders like um, Fraunhofer is, is, is going, going through. So quite impressive. And I think your future is very bright. It is, uh, well, uh, I, I do believe that there is some clear room for cooperation. But of course, Opto Sigma is doing lots of the production right now themselves. But one thing that we need to understand is that here we do have a technology that it can be very selective in wavelength for some application that Opto Sigma is targeting. I love, I love when people cooperate in Epic. I'm going to introduce you, Uwe, to one of uh, the companies who is working in embedded electronics, mm -hmm. embedded electronics in the Netherlands. Uh, I have one of the nicest people that I know in this network is Dirk Deman. Dirk Deman is working for Topic. Topic is one giant in embedded electronics. Dirk, you saw three different approaches and I think you found a lot of resonance with the kind of things that you are targeting and doing at Topic. Is there any ideas for cooperation in your mind? Well, well, thank you so much and I hope everybody can hear me because I've been having some problems. Loud and clear and we see okay. you crystal clear, it's perfect. <laughs> Great. Uh, I'm having some troubles with my internet connection. I'm working from home, so nobody else to blame but myself. <laughs> no, I, I saw today uh, a lot of interesting uh, uh, presentations. Thank you so much for your openness and uh, uh, showing us around, um, especially UFO with, 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 the, with the Fraunhof uh, Institute. There's so many opportunities within your company that are, uh, for, for me, uh, 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 mind-blowing to think of right now. So uh, I see a, a lot of uh, uh, opportunities and also Christian May's uh, 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 opportunities, open sharing uh, uh, new markets in the agricultural and, 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 uh, and healthcare uh, with the biosensors. I see a lot of opportunities there too. So uh, um, to be concrete, I can't say let's do this, but I will be more than happy to have uh, meeting in the coming weeks to discuss some creative uh, new opportunities if you guys are open for for those of you sure. who don't know Topic, they are bringing embedded electronics to many different markets, but especially in the civil engineering and also in the agriculture side, they are extremely strong. So there is a clear room for cooperation here, Uwe. I mean, definitely. And I am uh, appreciate to hear about, uh, since, let's say, for instance, in agriculture, it says, it says this new topic of smart farming, as they call it. Uh, and uh, definitely, let's say, also sensing or, let's say, imaging, also in the sense of, let's say, uh, some sort of spectral, multispectral imaging or even hyperspectral imaging uh, is definitely a topic. Uh, and uh, that might again involve uh, image sensors that might be sensitive uh, in the near infrared for instance and uh, state-of-the-art uh, NIR sensors or image sensors are typically rather expensive uh, or at least 2D image sensors yeah, and and, and, and there might be a chance uh, to work on new approaches, for instance, based on organic uh, photodiodes or let's say also uh, quantum dot enhanced uh, organic photodiodes or similar. Uh, that could be um, embedded on silicon, on silicon CMOS. Uh, and therefore, uh, I mean, it's still, let's say, not really, let's say, very low cost, but it could be a significantly lower cost uh, than the current uh, indium gallium arsenide uh, image sensors or similar. We, we have some experience already on recognizing cucumber plants. We've been working on a project uh, uh, with that. In, uh, and uh, I would be more than happy to have a discussion with you uh, about this, see what, what kind of creative solutions we could think of. That's and I would love to make the introduction. That's what well, I do. I'm introducing oh, the nice people. Guests, that would be great, Jose. Thank you so much. Yeah, we, we do have a lot of people in the room that want to discuss with you offline. So I'm not going to push them to, to be live in YouTube with their questions. But uh, we do have people from, from Fiat, from Audi, from Smart Move, from Size, from Intel in the room. Uh, I understand that they want to prefer to have the discussions uh, not really live. So that's OK. We make the introductions afterwards. But Uwe, this was spectacular. A spectacular. Christian, I love every minute of it. You are being one of the drivers of organic electronics. Thank you so much for that. Hagen, what you're doing in the coatings is just out of this world. And the three of you are rock stars in this epic ecosystem. Uwe, I really can't wait for all of us to be vaccinated and come to see you. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. We appreciate it as well. 
what do what is the next step if i ask you what is your preferred future after this meeting what cooperations would you love to target to do something together what kind of companies can i bring you in touch with i mean one of the let's say well let's say some of the fields that we are specifically interested in is let's say to apply our technology either from what uh, Hagen or Christian or myself have presented uh, into new let's say application domains uh, and uh, let's say specifically is a combination of highly integrated uh, seamless circuitry uh, together uh, with embedded light sources with embedded photo detectors uh, together with embedded uh, let's say optical layers uh, like the precision coded layers uh, of Hagen or maybe also uh, let's say this new uh, kind of uh, uh, let's say uh, devices like the, like the gallium nitride and silicon uh, that I mean Hagen has mentioned uh, opto electronics might be let's say in a somewhat uh, more future uh, uh, or let's say force of future uh, but I mean currently as I might start with power or with uh, RF electronics I mean the combination of those technologies uh, let's say to really achieve let's say a new uh, or to, 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 to cover new application areas maybe for instance in quantum technology or with quantum technologies uh, and those things uh, this would be uh, our interest uh, to well to move further. I would like to ask now all the people in the room to unmute their microphone and give Uwe, Christian, and uh, Hagen a very well-deserved round of applause. Thank you very much for a fantastic, a fantastic tour. We loved it. We love doing this. We love coming and visiting the Epic members. That really is what, what makes us happy. I really can't wait for all of us to be vaccinated and start traveling again. If you want Epic to visit your R&D center or your company, all you have to do is, is tell us. Tell us and we love doing this. I love doing this. I, today, I don't deserve to get paid. Carlos Lee, today, don't pay me because I'm having so much fun. You know, everybody who wants to participate in any of our meetings, all the events already announced in our website. So all you have to do is register as soon as possible for any of the online technology meetings, any of the company visits, any of the product launches, any of the quantum online technology meetings, any of the receptions. I'm here talking on behalf of a fantastic team of technology experts, marketing experts, leading experts, and of course, Carlos Lee, the CEO and leader of this association. Until the next time, I will say the same thing, but I will never stop saying it. Wash your hands wear a mask and get vaccinated as soon as possible because we need to travel. We need to travel again and we all need to go to Dresden and see the amazing technologies that they do as Fraunhofer FPP. Until the next time, take care of each other. Bye bye.